Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to talk about spotting sessions and cue sheets. Now, what are spotting sessions? Spotting sessions are meetings between the production and the head of music department, either in-person meetings or online meetings, where they sit down together and determine what music goes where in the movie. So you sit down and you watch the movie or TV show together, uh, scene by scene, and then you will talk about every scene, what music needs to be there, what they go for emotionally. Ideally, everybody has already watched the movie or the TV show episode, so everybody's already familiar with the content that they're about to watch. In many cases, there's already temp music in the movie or TV show, um, so the director or producers or showrunners can tell you what they like, what they dislike, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, what they'd like to improve upon, or where the temp music actually works for them. So you can, you know, use that as a guideline emotionally. They will also tell you what moments are important, what moments they really want to emphasize, what moments or what cuts they want to hit. And then as the composer, you of course also make suggestions. Uh, very often they are already very musical suggestions. I often suggest instruments or themes for characters or places or objects um, and kind of explain to them how I would like to use the themes. Uh, we already talk about instrumentation very often or specialty sounds that we would like for specific things in the movie. So it's very much one of the most collaborative moments in the production where you really sit down and talk about the vision, the musical vision for the movie or TV show or game. During this meeting, you or your assistant will take notes onto a so-called spotting sheet. Now, let me show you one of my spotting sheets that I like to use. I've created this kind of as an accumulation of all the different spotting sheets I've seen at different studios from having assisted a lot of composers, but every studio has its own Google Sheet, or uh, some people also like to use other software that is specialized in making cue sheets. So I'm just going to show you the cue sheet that I use for spotting session and for my internal team workflow, which is kind of a combo of a lot of the cue sheets that are out there. Now what you see here is an old cue sheet from an older production that I've done. This is what I share with the producers, with the director, with the music editor, if there is one, with my internal team, with the orchestrator, copyist, um, whoever needs this, the engineers, the scoring stage, you name it. Everybody gets this sheet. So it's very important that this sheet is always updated and always accurate at any given time because everybody on the music department uses this for reference. Now, the first column that you see is basically just the cue numbers. There have been strange questions that I've gotten via Instagram and Facebook about how you number cues. You count. That's how you number cues. If you have a long play version that is not separated out into reels, because technically we don't need reels anymore, you just name them one and one, and then you just count, you know, one and two, one and three, until you have no cues left. If you have reels, I prefer to work in reels, so I always request those. Um, everything in reel one will be 1M and then you count. And then once you hit reel two, it will be 2M and then you keep counting. You can start with 2M1 again in reel two if you want to. I like to just count from start to finish um, because even if we leave out the reel number, there will only be one uh, cue that has the number 30 on it. If you restart at every at every reel, then you end up having duplicate numbers, and the moment the reel number is missing, you don't know what cue it is anymore. But it's a personal preference. You can do whatever you want. As long as the, the cue numbers stay the same and everybody's working with the same numbers. That's the important part here. Songs, as you can see, uh, usually get letters. So those will be then like 1MA or 2MA, B, C, D, E, and so on. Then the second column for me is uh, cue titles. Again, you can name them whatever. Usually it's helpful to name them by what's in them. So you know 
uh, what the queue is about when someone says 2M11. I don't know what is in 2M11, but if someone, you know, tells me the queue title, then I know what scene it belongs to. But again, usually I name them by either what's in it or by a line that one of the actors says that is kind of giving away what scene it is. But you can name them whatever, it doesn't matter. And very often these titles are also changed for the soundtrack um, into kind of, you know, better titles. But also in soundtracks very often these cues are edited together or, or split apart so the cue titles don't really apply anymore. So you would rename them anyway. Then columns C, D, E, F, G for me are um, the exact time code when the queue starts, the exact time code when the queue ends, and then in this case I've added a script to my Google Sheets so that it can calculate the duration of a queue without me having to do the math. So you enter, in my case, the frames per second, and then the formula in the background will already uh, tell you the queue length and then I just copy that over so that I can do actual math with that because that back-end formula of the script that I added cannot actually do further math with this. So that's all of that. This is basically just queue durations and start and end points. This is really important that this stays updated, um, not only for placement in the movie but also later when the music is registered. This is important because you get paid for the amount of music that is in the show or in the movie. Uh, it's also important for my additional writers because they're paid by the minute of music, so it's always important to keep this updated. Column H is for the picture version. This is also very important because throughout the writing process you will get new picture versions and it's important to know what version of the picture the cue was written to or what version of the picture the cue was spotted to. This is particularly important also when you don't record to the latest version of the picture because sometimes, e even though the edit changed, the specific scene didn't change. So then um, we still record to the older version of the picture. But when I do session prep or an assistant does session prep, it's important that they line it up to that version of the picture. The next column is for queue version numbers. This is also very important to keep updated always starts at number version 1.0 but you know we we go through several revisions usually or conforms internal revisions external revisions so it's always important to uh, keep the version number updated both on the sheet but also in the file name so we always have a double and we know for sure which version of what queue to what picture version was actually approved then we have this the queue status column which is really just important for me internally because I can check things off as approved, as revision, as sent to production, and as in process. Um, this is important for my internal team. This is also important for us later on, but also the formula at the bottom really calculates how much music there is left to be written and the approved revision and sent and in progress formulas really tell me how much is still left to write, how much time I have left, how much I need to do every day in order to make it to the deadline. So this is mostly internally important. Then the next column is really more for internal purposes again. It's who is working on that cue. So it's the initials of the person who's writing that cue. It's important for me to know who did what. Um, it's important later when people get paid. It's easy because there's again another formula showing you who did how much of that movie. This is also important for later on when cue sheets are registered so everybody gets their fair percentage of what they've done because additional writers should be getting cue sheet percentages. Basically just don't be a d to your team. That's all. Give everybody their fair share, but that's just a side note. That's not what this video is going to be about. Um, and this is also the column where I assign cues. So usually that's empty at the beginning. Usually I put my initials into all the big cues that I definitely need to do. And then um, later on I go through the smaller cues and I kind of play to the strengths of my additional writers and try to assign cues knowing what they are capable of and what they're really good at. And then I will just assign a bunch of cues 
to them and then they know what to work on. And then later on in the process, very often if there are still gaps and there's still stuff that needs to be done that I'm not gonna get to, then I just let them pick whatever they wanna do. The next column is for the themes because before we start the process, I will have written themes based on the spotting session that we had and get those themes approved. And then my team has access to those themes and I will predetermine or we will have predetermined in the spotting session what theme is going to be used in what scene so that they know what material of mine to base off their music. And then you have the column um, that is called spotting, which is basically the first thing I enter as we are talking about the film. That's where I will enter all the information of the production, all the things they said about that scene, all the emotional content, what is important, did they like the temp music, did they not like the temp music, why? All the important information that you need in order to write the scene, basically. We also have a column called internal notes. That's usually where I give feedback on cues before it goes to the production because sometimes I have notes before I want to send it off for approval. Um, but also sometimes this is also where I put notes from the production if we get something back and there are small revisions or big revisions. Um, that's kind of where I put the notes for my team. And then we have these lovely checkmark boxes. This is also just a Google Sheet template that you can put in there. These are basically the checkboxes for once we are done writing the score. So this is where I will check off if we've already done our MIDI cleanup. I've just done a video about that if you want to know how that's done. But we've also, uh, I also check off if something was sent to the orchestrator already so I know what they're working on. If something was proofread already, if something was sent to the copyist. This is basically the entire workflow, just so I know who has what material, what is already done, what has been worked on. We also check off if we've already printed the mix stems so that if I prepare the Pro Tools sessions, again, different video that I've already done, or if someone else is preparing Pro Tools sessions, they can already see what stems they have available to build those sessions. I check off what Pro Tools prep has already been done, what I've already sent to the scoring stage so that the, the assistant at the scoring stage can look at the sheet and see what sessions they should already have and that they can prepare. I check off if a cue has already been recorded, I check off if something has been sent to mixing, if it has been mixed, what mix version has been approved so that the mixing engineer knows what stems to print of what cue version. And then I check it off once I've delivered it to the dub stage. Again, different video to how to deliver files to the dub stage. Um, so this is basically the sheet that should have all the information. You start it with the spotting session by putting in cue numbers, possibly already cue titles, and the cue duration, start and end points, and the spotting notes, the briefing on the cues but then it basically gets expanded and filled out as you progress through the whole production. You can see at the bottom, everything has formulas attached already. So everything is pre-calculated when I check things off so that everybody can exactly see where we're at in the progress. The reason why I like to do it this way is because it eliminates a lot of unnecessary uh, communication with the team because frankly, I spend some days just half the day managing the team. And that's not really why I want to do this job. I don't want to spend my time supervising. I want to spend my time writing music. So any process that I can automate that eliminates communication, that eliminates extra emails and messages, I will do that. And this Google Doc really helps. The deadlines are also on this Google Sheet just so everybody's aware of when the sessions are happening and you know when our writing deadline is happening. And then there are other pages. You can create them however you see fit. I have one page just listing all the themes and what versions of the themes have been approved so everybody is aware of what we're working with. There's one page that is usually my recording checklist um, where I list the sessions and session time. This is also where I make the recording order. I will create a separate video for, for that. 
how to make a proper recording order, but this is basically um, important for the scoring stage and for the copyist and librarian, so all the cues are in the right order already, um, and they always know what the next cue is going to be, just so we stay within our recording time and everything is, you know, ordered in a way that is playable and comfortable for the musicians. And then I will check off the instruments and everything um, just to make sure we have actually recorded everything. This is also the job of a score coordinator or assistant, so this is a very popular task to do during sessions. Um, there's also an extra page for take notes. Very often the stage assistant will do that, but it's always nice to have everything double and, and take your own um, take notes just to know which take of which cue you really liked or if there are specific bars of take one that you liked but then other bars of take two. It's always good to have that notated for the editing later on. And that's pretty much the magic of the spotting sheet. Then there's of course another type of cue sheet which is the cue sheet that is submitted to the performing rights organizations for royalties. So that's the cue sheet that you would use for ownership splits and registration. Um, there is a very nice template from ASCAP and BMI called RapidQ. I tend to use that, um, that template for that submission. It's based off of this cue sheet, but let's take a look at the other one that is being registered. So as you can see on this sheet, there's a lot of production information, first of all, about what the production is to identify the, um, the movie or show and what episode it is and all that stuff. And then in this case, you don't really need any spotting information or whatever on this sheet. Really what you need is the cue numbers, cue titles, how long each cue is, and then the composer splits you enter and the publisher splits you enter who owns what percentage, but also what performing rights organization they are registered with and what their IPI number is, just so the royalties go to the correct people. And so this sheet is basically used by performing rights organizations when the thing airs on TV or uh, something's played on the radio or overseas you get royalties for theatrical performances, in the United States you do not. Um, if the movie streams, Wherever it is performed publicly, this is the sheet that would tell the performing rights organization that collects the money from those organizations or channels uh, or movie theaters where the money needs to be distributed and how much everybody gets. And again, just a reminder that everybody who contributed something to the music should be getting a split. So that's it for, um, for cue sheets and for spotting sessions. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll try to answer them. Um, and otherwise, if you like this type of content, there's more coming. So like and subscribe.